<laughs> no. Welcome to Solo Only, my Final Fantasy XIV character that can't interact with other players. My goal is simple, get as far as I can in Final Fantasy XIV by myself. No parties with other players or NPCs, no market board, no retainers, and as few NPC purchases as possible. And for as long as we were able to, we would have to use Level Sync or Silence Echo for any instance. We have an insane amount of work to do if we want to take on Castro. The Black Eft is going to require high stats, a perfect plan, and a lot of luck. For now, we're focused on those high stats, so we need Masterwork 2 from our armorer to make the best possible crafted gear, Woots. Day 1 begins the hunt for Fieldcraft Demi Materia 3. We'll need two of these items for the next Armor and Masterwork book, so our progression was hinging on RNG. Fieldcraft 3s only come from desynthing high level gear. The best options we had without purchasing items from an NPC were the artisan gear we traded for last video and the forager gear from our gatherers. To make the item we needed for our masterwork books, we were going to need higher level crafting food, so we start with leveling Fisher. But first, I have something really exciting to show you. Okay, cool, bro. Now open the box. No, you don't. You don't get to have a knife. Do you want it that bad? Do you? Re <laughs> you can't just come around the other side and pretend like nothing's happening. I know what you're up to. This month's treats come to you from India, an enormous country of 1.2 billion people. Do you want to learn about India or do you want to eat the paper? Please, I would love- No, don't eat the snacks before I- You already bit into it. <laughs> You're the worst. Some very fun India facts. I've never learned a fact before in my entire life. Don't go near the knife. And then we have our little list of treats. They have chocobos in India. Have you come to join for the unboxing? Don't look at that pizza. Most of these are going to be getting me through my 24 hour stream, but this, I am eating this guy right now. Oh, that's so good. Wait, what the heck is this? No, it's over. It's all over for me. Thank you Try Treats for sponsoring this video. If you want your own box, you can get your first for 15% off if you use the link in the description and the coupon code WRATHGAMES. I have a coupon code. Getting back on track, we grab some mudstone for a mudstone whetstone and craft some silver ingots to make some silver spoon lures and get to fishing. Our grand company turn-in was a goblin perch, so that's our first target. But after about an hour of trying for a 1% chance to mooch the fish, we decided to move on to some other leveling methods. Descending all of our fish, we move over to Mordona for some leave quests. A few sludge skippers later, we were level 52. Now, with all of our gatherers at level 50, it was time to check in on what we needed to upgrade our gathering gear. The main upgrade for our fisher, the forager's rod, required us to catch six silver sovereigns. With our current stats, that wasn't an option, so we changed our focus back over to mining for umbral rocks. To get the umbral rocks, we needed to replace our old mining gear with some fancy new pieces. Forager sledgehammer briefly seemed like an option, but ended up being ridiculously expensive in grand company seals. With that in mind, we're getting some new gear. First is some earth crystals for hippogriff leather, and some Effervescent water for Natron and undyed felt, silk threads and woolen yarn, and zinc ore for a brass ingot to make a miner's shirt and miner's slops. After a few minutes digging through the crafting log, we found our last piece, the Hamlet helmet. Rose gold and some dark steel nuggets later, the helmet was made and our new mining armor was complete. What a cool mining outfit. Next up were the tools. Spruce lumber, alt goat horns for horn glue, and more dark steel gets us our malicious sledgehammer. Then some boar's leather, rosewood logs for rosewood lumber, and cobalt ore into cobalt ingots to make a cobalt plate and our new pickaxe. With 313 perception, we almost had enough to get our umbral rocks, we just needed one more push. The notion lettuce, a wild onion, a quick detour for some water clusters, being bribed to sort my inventory. We'll sort the inventory. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, I'll go sort here for high intensity sorting gameplay. We're gonna make it a very big window. Sorting greater than tomatoes. I don't particularly agree for the keep sorting. No, I can't. My tomatoes. Okay, I'll sort on the way. Some Zamel tomatoes. All right, back to business. More sorting. We've done it. We have succeeded. Solo's inventory is sorted. A quick treasure map, and then finally stop to craft our land trap salad. With our new food in hand, we grab some ferberite for future crafts, make a basilisk whetstone, and make a militia bracelet for more GP. Then we got caught on a new accessory kit. We grab some electrum ore for electrum ingots and make a new earring. Shortly after, we grab our first umbral rocks. On our first attempt, we managed to get 18. It wasn't enough for a new pickaxe, but it was more than enough for a new hat. Next, we got some raptor skins for raptor leather to make a raptor skin choker and two new rings. Until we got our new pickaxe, this was as good as our mining gear could be. With the gathering upgrades done for now, we're back to focusing on demi material. We needed an item that was easily farmable that could descend into Fieldcraft 3s, and it had to be cheap enough to make them in bulk. The first thought was Aetherite Rings, the absolute perfect descent. Aetherite Rings only have two ingredients, a water cluster and a rose gold nugget. With how cheap it was to make, the descent would always give you the rose gold nugget and the water cluster back, or it would give you a demi material. Before spending too much time on the rings, we took a moment to check the forager gear 
one more time, but it was going to be a horrible grind to get it. So I need, for every forager craft or artisan craft, I need 15,000 grand company seals. Oh, that's really bad. Even for selling the clothes off my back, I had nowhere near enough to make even one forager tool, so I needed to make another armor set for my botanist. We grab some black alumen for hippogriff leather, craft our botanist work boots, some fleece, and woolen yarn for woolen cloth to make a botanist up. With the new bits of gear, we take a moment to plan out our gathering cycle. We needed umbral rocks, silkworm cocoons, and fragrant logs every time they came up. Checking for the best artisan gear turn-ins we could do, we throw together a militia all to boost our leather worker. And to try to get the stats we needed, we threw some extra materia onto our gear. Three craftsmanship off, we could finish with a food buff, so it was time to focus on the next problem. We needed Grand Company seals. A lot of them. Our best Grand Company seal methods up to now had been incredibly slow and inconsistent, but while we were browsing for new ideas, a gamer from chat made a discovery. Oh yeah, one hippogriff leather and an undyed woolen cloth. But first, we needed to know how many seals each craft would get us. One hippogriff hunt later, and a pit stop to grab silkworms, fragrant logs, and a bit of ferberite, we made the first militia duckbill, plus a wanderer's palace weapon for good measure. The duckbill and the wanderer's items were the same value, 317 seals. Now we just needed around 50 to 100 more duckbills. Sneaking in a trip to the umbral rocks, we finally got our hands on the best pickaxe we can get. From 310 gathering to 358, we wouldn't have to worry about minor gear for a very long time. We spent more time gathering hippogriff skins before remembering that whole aetherite ring bit from earlier. A few decents later, our dreams were crushed. The Aetherite rings could only desynth into Demi-Materia 2, not 3, so this wasn't an option for getting our masterwork books. For now, our best bet was desynthing forager hats and artisan glasses, which meant a lot of waiting for timed notes. Dreaming of farming countless hippogriffs in the morning, this was the end of day one. Oh no, my blanket is too small. If only I had more subscribers, I would not freeze to death in my sleep. Day 2 starts and it's time to grind duckbills. Since we were planning on using ninja for the hippogriff and fleece grind, we needed to get our hands on better ninja gear. Before getting started, we set up some in-game alarms for all of the important timed notes. And with our eyes on a shiny new dagger, it's time to get to work. We grab our daily logs and umbral rocks, restock on wind and earth crystals, craft some militia duckbills, turn them in for 2,000 seals, spend the seals on coke, craft two two dark steel nuggets for a dark steel ingot to make some misericord blades for our shiny new daggers. With our new daggers finished, it was time to find some hippogriffs. Occasionally, during our grind, hippogriff fates would spawn that got us some extra grand company seals while we were grinding for maps. After some quality time with our hippogriffs had passed, we stopped in with our dear friend Talon to check on some things. Right now, it seemed like our best option for Fieldcraft Demi Materia 3 is going to be artisan spectacles and forager hats. The next question, of course, is what the best trade-in for the artisan spectacles was. After some debate, we decided the best option option was silver brocades in Weaver's Masterwork 1 book, so we needed a high quality Vanya silk. But just before going to get the materials for that, we traded in for some forager hats to decent. This is my moment? My chance for a Fieldcraft Demi Materia 3? No. Ooh, but a high quality Vanya silk! That works, I will do that turn in. Thank you very much. No Fieldcrafts yet, but we managed to get the Goldsmith and Weaver Masterworks without much effort. Plan set, alarms on, it was time to grind. With our first brocade grind behind us, it was time to cash out and try our luck. 11 spectacles, no, 10 spectacles. We got 10 attempts at this gamer's 10 spectacles, and all we needed was two demi materia. And from those 10 spectacles, we got zero. Okay, back to work. That last desynth went so badly that it killed the recordings. So we have to deal with the stream quality for now. There's no rabbit. I don't know what you're talking about. No, wait. I'm, there we go. Perfect. This time around, we had been grinding for a lot longer before our turnips. We managed to get 9 forager hats and 29 artisan spectacles. And now, with a full inventory, our field crafts were practically guaranteed. It's time for the big payoff we've been waiting for all night. The forager hats got us absolutely nothing. I got a demi materia. That's not what we need, but I guess I'll take it. Do I feel the dread each time I don't see it? Yeah, I really do. 22 spectacles later, it was starting to seem hopeless, but we finally got one ray of hope. Oh! Oh, we got, we got one! Thank God! Oh, thank God! I would have, I would have lost it. <laughs> Went down. And now we're on the the streak where we get four in a row, right? Yeah, I don't think anyone believed that. It's not looking so good, gamers. But the final decent, we only got one field crap. All I needed was two. You couldn't have given me two, Yoshi P. Come on! What is this? Well, what can we use the master crafts for? some sandals very cool great so that went fantastically hist how's it going what did you do for your demi material did you do this because i i thought that this was the thing that we would do maybe i just made a mistake somewhere you know i could i mean i make mistakes all the time
while we were suffering, Hist had discovered something with a better chance at giving field crafts. Astrolabe clinometers. Crafting them required grand company materials, but so long as it gave us a good chance at our demi materia, it was worth it. Astral rocks for an astral eye, aqueous whetstones and wind clusters for a radiant eye, some more force inventory sorting, and our first astrolabe clinometer. We got the radiant eye back from our decent, which meant we could craft another without any more company seals. But that didn't last long. While the gamers shoot me up and we killed hippogriffs for our grand company seals, someone in chat stepped on a landmine. Put a shirt on my ninja glam. You know what? Just for you, Claire, we'll put a shirt on the ninja. Right before going to get the new shirt, I stopped myself. I liked my current look too much, and I wanted to focus on the duckbill grind. How could I get rid of the Deverax plate skirt? And I had no idea what I had done. Time for me to put on a shirt. There's a good... Stay shirtless. <laughs> shirt on. <laughs> Emperor News top is clearly the ideal shirt. All right, so currently shirt off is winning for the shirt. Yes, no, <laughs> Shirt on. Final answer. This better get a mention in the next solo only video. I will probably, if I don't put the great shirt war in the solo only video, it will at the very least get its own short little video. Okay, shirt. After chat meticulously picked out the best outfit for my ninja. Now that we've got a shirt, it's time for a nice long skirt. What, is, what skirt can I even get? Feel the dirt beneath your feet. Emperor's boots. Our new skirt was made, we lost our shoes and gloves, and we were free to get back to our duck build. After turning them in for 2700 seals, we got another failed astrolabe. In a desperate attempt to keep my sanity, I made some rose gold cogs and turned in the artisan gear for more seals. After many hours of grinding, I was ready to end the day, so we did one final astrolabe. This is what we've got. This is the last one. I need one Demi Materia 3. <laughs> we got it! We actually got it, dude! Oh, thank God. I'm not doing this again. I'm going to tell you that from right now. This is never happening again. Originally, I wanted four Fieldcraft Demi Materia 3s, but after that gauntlet, I decided two was enough. With that in mind, it was time to get our armor and masterwork books. We got some more coke from the Grand Company, made a high quality dark steel ingot for the first book, unlocked Master Armor 1, two dark steel nuggets for a dark steel wire, two more dark steel wires for a hammer, and the last wire with our two Fieldcraft Demi Materia for a reinforced dark steel wire. And with that, the Armorer Masterwork 2 book was in our hand. All of this, and it was only day two. With armor and masterworks unlocked, we could start heading towards the best craftable warrior armor. The only problem, getting the ingot. And so, after a big celebration with the gamers from chat, this was the end of day two. Day three starts in a bit of a panic, with the goal for the day being on a strict timer. The first option for getting our Woots gear was with fishing. The Woots Zenith Knife Fish has a chance to desynth into Woots Nuggets, which we could then turn into ingots for our armor. But the Woots Zenith isn't available that often, and one of the windows to catch it was coming up soon. If we missed it, there was a chance we'd have to wait up to 22 hours for another opportunity. So, filled with adrenaline and a half-eaten bagel on my desk, we're off to the races getting better fishing gear. Hippogriff leather and silver ore for silver ingots and fisher's gloves, undyed felt, and a lot more leather to make a fisher's shirt. And with our shirt, we ran out of time. The fish window opened, and it was available for six minutes. Having never fished here before, we started off at the wrong fishing hole. Losing some time to a lack of preparation, I eventually found the right spot. Continuing that lack of preparation, we had to hope that 212 gathering would be enough to catch a big fish. But that wouldn't end up mattering, because we never even saw the thing. The next chance at this fish is not for 12 hours. With that adrenaline pumping action finished, we could calm down a bit and upgrade the rest of our fishing gear. To get the best fishing rod, the forager's rod, we needed to catch Silver Sovereign. Silver Sovereign required 300 gathering and a Yumizuno. Yumizunos are normally an easy thing to get, but for Zolo, they come with the same problem that the original crayfish ball bait did. To craft a Yumizuno, I need a black lip oyster, which we could catch with a Yumizuno or buying bait from an NPC. But unlike the crayfish, we could get the Yumizuno from elsewhere. Fishing Leaves and Mordona have a chance to give Yumizuno on completion, so we just needed to do some leave quests until they popped up. We started with two fishing leaves that got us to level 56, made a cobalt ingot for an easy leave, and managed to get the Yumizuno leave in just three turn-ins. One piece of the puzzle down, now we needed 300 gathering. Some snurble tufts, effervescent water and silver ore for natron, undyed felt, and hippogriff leather to make fisher gas skins, and a silver ingot to make fisher's wading boots. With those upgrades, our armor seemed like the best it could be, so next up was a new fishing rod. Some rosewood lumber, crab oil, and mithril ingots later, we had a rosewood fishing rod, and then, with some electrum ore for electrum ingots, and the last shark oil from our saddlebag, we get to 
distracted and run off to make some food. Fancy spinach, night milk from buffaloes, apkalo eggs, sunset wheat for flour, rock salt, buffalo milk and mineral water from an NPC, table salt, high dough, sweet cream for cream cheese, fruit slumber, basilisk eggs for whetstone, starting to feel like this stopped being about food all of a sudden, fire crystals and dark steel nuggets to make a new offhand for my culinarian and all those other materials to make our best gathering food, the spinach quiche. After remembering to make our gilded fishing rod and doing a bit of melding, we had over 300 gathering and we're ready for our silver sovereign. Heading over to Oshan's torch and equipping our Yumizuno, it was time for some fishing. 30 minutes later, we caught our third silver sovereign and rushed over to Mordona for our new fishing rod. Except we, uh, needed six, so back to fishing. Another 30 minutes and another three sovereigns, this time we actually got the fishing rod. With a grand total of 356 gathering, after looking up what I needed, we were five points off, even with food buff, so we had to change our gear around. Our best option right now was replacing the forager's hat, as it was the only piece of gear I couldn't melt. Thankfully, the hamlet fisher's hat was pretty cheap, so we just needed to catch a white lip oyster. We fished with some fish for a few minutes, pulled in our oyster, made a technically worse hat, and melted in the gathering we needed. My chat also told me about a fishing ability, fish eyes, that would get me another chance at the Woot Zenith much sooner than waiting 12 hours. Fish eyes allows you to ignore the time of day for catching a fish, so all we needed was to wait for the right weather. The weather wouldn't be ready for another 30 minutes, so we took the chance to continue our title run in Palace of the Dead. 20 minutes later, our no death run had made it past floor 50. Heading back over to the fishing spot, our plan was simple. As soon as the weather changed, we used makeshift bait so any size fish could be used to mooch, fish eyes to ignore the time of day, and chum to catch fish faster. Our first fish eyes window didn't let us see any zenith, but after scraping together the GP for another one, we finally got a zenith on the line. This is it? Yes? No way! Local Final Fantasy XIV streamer yells at fish. Nine minutes left to catch the fish, I was willing to give it one more chance. In the final moments, we got one more big bite. It's it. This is it. Please, please pull it up. And that one got away too. Sufficiently broken, this was the end of our Woot's fishing attempt. At the very least, I can say I will not be returning to fishing. Now we'd be moving on to the second option for Woot's ingots, something that can kill two birds with one stone. In the previous video, I mentioned a side goal was going for a title from Palace of the Dead, The Lonely Explorer. To get this title, we needed to get all the way to floor 100 and beat the boss without dying, then die on floor 101 or above. In a twist of fate, the accursed horde from floor 101 to 150 and 151 to 200 had a chance at giving equipment that could descend into Woot's ingots. So that side goal for our title just became the main goal. You're not able to go past floor 100 if you die at any point during the run, so I would basically have to get the title if I wanted any boots ingots. With that, we're once again back in Palace of the Dead. We've done 51 to 60 more times than I can count, so I know this floor set like the back of my hand. After a relaxing 10 floor run to recover from the Woots fiasco, this was the end of day three. Day 4 brings the start of our palace grind in earnest. But first, I wanted to try a high-level treasure map. And as stated, this sets the tone for the rest of the stream. I want you to expect the rest of the day is going to be that level of quality. Distractions finished, it was time for palace. I will be completely honest with all of you. We're heading into uncharted territory for my solo. On my main character, the furthest I got solo was floor 20 before I lost interest. This was the furthest I had ever been, and I had to constantly reference Maggie's palace guide in the middle of the run. I also so still walked through the middle of rooms because I only have two brain cells. Floors 61 to 70 didn't have any major threats, so we got through the floor set without any issues. And the boss for floor 70, Yaquara, is also pretty simple. Occasionally, it'll drop water puddles on the ground. If it's in those water puddles, it gets haste and kills you quicker. That's it. Floor 70 boss down, and we're on to the next set. 71 to 80 is also an easy floor set for most of it, that is, until you reach the boss. Godana is the baby version of the main run killer for necromancer attempts. At 17% health, they start channeling Ecliptic Meteor. If you don't manage to kill the boss before it finishes casting, it hits for 80% of your max health. Thankfully, we came in fully prepared for the DPS check and managed to scrape by. With floor 80 done, we finally get a view of the final boss, just 20 floors away. I was starting to get incredibly nervous. Any unlucky frog trap or detonation would mean the end of our run, making us start from floor 1 again. Floors 81 to 90, our biggest fear was the palace bomb. If we didn't kill them quickly after entering combat, they could instantly explode, which would kill me in one hit. After getting through all those floors, we're on to the godmother. Unlike the last two bosses, I had to focus on more than just moving and dealing damage. There are two main mechanics to the godmother. The first is summoning a bunch of little bombs and a gray bomb. The gray bomb needs to be killed before it finishes 
finishes casting, otherwise you're taking an ecliptic meteor level of hit, dealing 80% of your max health. And that's not even the worst of it. Her second mechanic spawns a giddy bomb somewhere in the arena. While the giddy bomb is alive, she channels massive burst, an AoE that deals 99% of your max health. To deal with this, you have to line yourself up with the giddy bomb and hit it into the godmother before she finishes the cap. Godmother down, 10 floors left. While there isn't any specific mob that's dangerous on floors 91 to 99, their auto attacks do massive damage, so if I ever pulled more than one, I have a decent chance of dying. Heart beating out of my chest, all that was left was the final boss, Nebeth Abdelor. At 90%, Nebeth will cast his first Summon Darkness. Two undead will spawn and start attacking the player. If they're killed normally, they respawn after a short period of time, but if they're killed with a Pomander of Resolution, they stay dead. At 65%, he repeats these mechanic and summons another two adds. Somewhere between 40 and 50%, he casts it for the last time with three more summons. He also adds a new attack into the mix, a massive Conal AoE, Doom. If I slip up and get hit by it, it's over. Doom is an unavoidable death. After using all of my resolutions and dodging the Dooms, Floor 100, was clear. Yes, dude! Yes! Yes! We got the title, gamers. Why am I sad for this guy? He was just evil. Don't close your eyes. One goal finished, one more to go. Now we had to get lucky. Every floor set above 100 have the good accursed hordes that can get us our woot ingots. We just needed to live long enough to get them. Accursed hordes on our mind, we don't waste any time and jump right back in. Past floor 100, you start to mirror the previous floors. Floor 101 to 110 is basically a harder version of floors 1 to 10. The biggest threats on these floors are Yarzon, which give a vulnerability up, causing me to take more damage, and Hornets. A final sting from a Hornet is yet another instant kill, so we need to kill them quickly if we ever aggro them. Alicanto is basically just a harder hitting floor 10 boss, so it goes down without much effort. Floors 101 to 110 got us 4 silver sacks, 4 chances at our Woots ingots. Floor 111 to 120 have slimes which can explode and instantly kill you, cobras that eat you if you turn into a frog, and morbles that give massive debuffs. But as long as you dodge all of that, the rest is pretty easy. Alrighty, our best run yet at floor 119. We did what we set out to do because we have gotten the most important title for solo only, the Lonely Explorer. Now it was time to open our hordes. The items we needed were replica elegant pieces. Not all of them could desynth for woot ingots, but some of them can. The iron trimmed got us one solid chance at woots, and it was time for our silvers. A materia, some fancy blue dye, a bow from Titan EX, and a scholar book from Titan EX. Before we desynth our spoils, a chat member mentioned that we had not only gotten the Lonely Explorer title, but we also got a high score, 16th place for summoners on Dynamics. Since then, I've dropped down a spot, but I mean, hey, I'm still up there. And now it's time for decent. The Tremor Bow got us Demi Materia of Crags. Not the EX material, but still a very nice drop. The Aiming Pants became a Platinum Ingot, and the Boots of Maiming turned into Kirimu Leather. No Woots Ingots, so this wouldn't be the last we saw of Palace. Waving goodbye to my first ever title run, this was the end of Day 4. The next day, I did some palace off stream to get back to where we were, starting from floor 51. Four hours later, we were back at floor 110 and had 16 more chances at our Woots ingots. Day 5 continues our palace runs with some new information. I had a list of items we could get that would give us our Woots ingots, and the dream of getting some accursed hordes from past floor 150. The gold trim sacks from 151 had a chance at giving Heaven's Word EX weapons for drop. If we were lucky enough, we could get a level 60 axe for my warrior that could carry us through to the end of A Realm Reborn. Before jumping into Palace, we restock on sustaining potions, make echo drops for silence traps, and craft some lava toad legs for food during the run. The main safeguard for our run was a Pomander of Raisin. With it activated, if I died at any point during the next 10 floors, I would automatically revive on the spot instead of failing the run. We only had one of them though. If I didn't manage to find one soon, we'd be on our own for the next floors. In the end, we managed to get through without using the raising and moved on to the floor 120 boss. Kiridamuka is the same as the floor 20 boss. Kill the bees it summons before they cast final sting and kill boss. Without a pomander of raising, we took the next floors very slowly, doing our best to avoid fights as much as possible. The biggest issues on floor 120 to 130 are how stupidly painful the auto attacks have gotten, minotaurs that use an AoE they can one shot, and skatines that can put you to sleep. Halfway through, we found a pomander of raising, but I decided to save it until the next floor set. Our dangerous gamble had paid off and we made it to the next boss. Like the previous two, Alphard is a simple boss. Drop his AoEs on the edge of the room, then run into the center for fear itself. 131 to 140 is a well-deserved break. The only mob that does anything is the Aramen, which can petrify. And after many hours of chat yelling at me, I finally started walking along the walls. 
35 minutes later, we're on our puck. Continuing with that well-deserved break, you just use a resolution and you win. Wow, easy boss. Okay, I will take that. All right, okay, 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 okay. I need to live two more floor sets. If I make it to floor 160 and I get some of the Accursed Horde off of 151, we are at the peak. That is our end game. After our brief reprieve, floor 141 is when things started to get bad. Demons can use Charybdis and deal 99% of max health. Gargoyles are mini patrols that use incredibly painful poisons. Wraiths have a massive room-sized AoE, and Boots and Persona can paralyze. On floor 144, we got caught trying to sneak past a gargoyle and ended up using our raising palm. Like, that's not just me, right? This is just really suspicious. Stepping on a luring trap, I was forced to use a pomander of rage to save my life and finish floor 149. By the skin of our teeth, we made it to Tisiphony. The biggest fear with Tisiphony is her auto attacks and summons. She summons fanatic zombies that rush towards the player, and if any of them reach you, you'll be rooted in place until it's dead, leaving you vulnerable to any of her AoEs. After a long-fought battle, Tisiphony was defeated, and floor 150 was cleared. We did it. Okay, 150 cleared. Now we get to the floor set that's just going to absolutely slaughter me. This is the first floor set that has the super cool aesthetic. Wait, no, I need food. It's a good thing that I brought the stuff for extra food, except I did not bring sunset wheat. After grabbing some wheat, we made some more toad legs and got back to business. With three pomanders of intuition to find the accursed horde for us, all we had to do was survive. No specific mob stands out as being a death trap, but the damage from each of them requires us to run away and stay out of auto range for every fight. And I do want to reiterate how gorgeous these floors are. The last thing to know is that from floor 151 onwards, the smallest a floor could be is five rooms. <laughs> Look at that, dude! <laughs> Look at that room! That is the most terrifying treasure room I have ever seen in my life. A few floors later, we found another one that wasn't avoidable. Luckily, we had a Pomander of Rage to handle things, but even the slightest misstep would mean the end of the run. Using the last resources I had, I cleared out the mobs and we made it to the last floor. With no resources left and four Accursed Hordes in my pocket, the floor set is finished and all that's left is the boss. We've done the weaker version of this boss more times than I can count. Todd's Ritter, a harder variant of the Floor 60 boss, felt like an old friend. And so, with muscle memory kicking in, floor 160 was finished, and we had our first gold sack. I love this. This is gorgeous. Let's just take a quick look at what we have. From the iron and silver trimmed sacks, we need the replica elegant. Any weapon, really? Any, like, metal weapon? Here we go. Iron trimmed first. That's one. Two chances at Wu's ingots. Three pieces. Four chances. <laughs> okay, the silver. That's another chance at Wu's. And another chance it would. If I can just get an axe here, we're set. I don't have to worry about anything else. <laughs> that was close. It's almost an axe. We still got three more. It's okay. That's a chance it woots. So we didn't get anything too amazing from the gold sacks, but we got two dead hive pieces. Now it was time to decent. For a full set of Woot's armor, we needed 14 total ingots. Five ingots to make the chest piece, and three ingots for everything else. The Tremor Cane got us four Battlecraft Demi Materia, and two unlucky decents later, while rushing through the menus, we finally got some. Four of them? That's an entire armor piece! After decenting all of our items, we ended up with a grand total of seven ingots. Halfway to a full set, this would get us two armor pieces, and those two armor pieces would be enough. For anything that wasn't a Woots armor piece, we would be using Wolfram, so we spent some time planning out our final gear. Armor chosen, we had some crafting to do. Our final set was going to be a heavy Wolfram helmet, chest, and pants, and Woots gloves and boots. With that, we should finally be able to take on the Black F. Shellite for a Wolfram square, Platinum ore for Platinum nuggets, and a few pieces of Hippogriff leather make our Woots sabotage. Insufficient craftsmanship for 51? What? Okay, turns out I didn't have the stats to craft the things, so we needed to upgrade our crafter gear. We grabbed some Lenotian Leak for a new food buff, but since we needed higher craftsmanship and control, food wasn't going to be enough. The best tool we could get was Artisan Pliers, which needed quick hardening sealant. Alongside the pliers, some armor crafts needed Terminus Putty, which required the Alchemist Masterwork recipes. But even with high quality Artisan Pliers, it still wouldn't be enough, so we had to rely on Materia as well. We stopped in with Mutamix to trade our useless Materia for random ones, and ended up getting pretty lucky. We spent a bit too much time gambling, but ended up with a lot of Materia we needed. The plan right now was to use Materia to hit the control requirement, and chilled Popoto Soup for the craftsmanship requirement. It would require a lot of dumb luck, but it was doable. Exhausted from the roller coaster of emotions, this was the end of day five.
Day 6 begins and we're focused on finishing our gear. We start things off with some quick math for the artisan pliers. It seemed like we would need around 15,000 seals to buy all the materials, which meant we needed to craft around 35 to 40 militia duckbills. We spent the next two hours killing hippogriffs and caracal, grabbed some black alumen, wind crystals, lightning shards, and earth crystals, made 34 duckbills, and turned them all in for 15,000 seals. The quick hardening sealant cost just under 14,000, and we had enough left over for one shellac. But I forgot we needed coke for the dark steel ingot, who was back to killing hippogriffs. Six duckbills later, we grab our coke, craft a wool from ingot, a dark steel ingot, and shark oil to make high quality artisan's pliers. The artisan pliers got us to 391 control, but to craft our woods gear, we needed 407, so we would have to use materia for the missing 16 points. After pentamelding my militia wrists and finishing off with a ring, we landed at a comfortable 408 control. With our control finished, we needed a food buff for our craftsmanship. Popotos, island parsley, and buffalo milk or smooth butter gets us our high quality chilled popoto soup. Now that we had the stats, we did a final turn in of forager hats and duck bills for one more shellite. Platinum ore into platinum nuggets, and the shellite for a wool from square makes our woots gauntlets and woots sabatons. The jump to woots from our previous gear was gigantic, both in defense and offense. Before we started the long grind to make our Wolfram armor, I wanted to do a shorter one, so it was finally time to get Bill some new stats. More dock bills for seals, a dark steel ingot for a rampager head, to get Bill his long overdue upgrade. With our new gear in hand, it was time to give Castrum another shot. Level Sync had us dying at the same time as before, so it looked like we had to use Silence Echo. Queuing back in with Silence Echo on, it was time to see if our gear made any difference. Facing the black eft again, we finally managed to see the last ad wave. It still seemed far off, but we were making progress. Our cast room clear was closer than ever. The extra health and defense from our Woots armor had made what seemed impossible into something we might just barely be able to do. And with some final upgrades for new Wolfram gear and some better food options, we may just be able to beat this. I'll see you next time for the end of 2.0. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.